first item on the agenda is um, the uh, opening of the meeting for public comment. And you ask that the, if there is public comment, the commenter pay attention to the fact that our agenda tonight will include a discussion of three particular properties. So if your comments relate to any one of those properties, then I'd be delighted to welcome your comments in that in that regard, and those are um, properties at 159 Elm Street, um, 83 Round Hill Road, and 9 Pomeroy Terrace. So uh, those will be under discussion tonight um, in the next hour and a half, and if there are any comments related to any of those properties, I would obviously and, uh, 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 welcome your comments at that time. Um, but regardless of whether your comments concern uh, any of those properties, uh, you're welcome to make a comment now, so on any topic. And if you could simply accommodate, come on up and accommodate to my hearing loss by speaking nice and loud, I'd appreciate that. <laughs> I wanted to inform you that on January 28th, the Zoning Board of Appeals met and denied a retroactive request for a sign permit on the development in on Round Hill Road. Um, the sign came down February the 5th, however the posts still remain, and um, I will bring the next installment. Um, I'd also like to mention that um, I looked into what were formerly historical preservation tax credits. They are now known as historical rehabilitation tax credits, and um, I don't know, that sounded ominous to me, um, but I do hope that you will take the time to drive up Round Hill Road and check out the new windows. Thank you. Thank you very much. <coughs> um, is there an additional comment? I just, I should have noted earlier and will mention now to both commission uh, members of all audience that we are um, because of scheduling difficulties earlier due to snow and, and uh, um, workload uh, we are up against a seven o'clock use of this room by the community preservation commission and so i want to hear everybody uh, thoroughly uh, but we make all of our comments efficient and to that uh, with that in mind that would be wonderful we'll probably do the same take kind of advice um, any additional comments Please come up and... Uh, um, David, I wrote you a letter. Um, I don't know if I need to... Could, could you possibly come yeah. up? I'm sorry, that would yeah. help me. I appreciate it. Sorry for the inconvenience. Me, me too. I, I wrote a letter about the process of applying for permits. Yeah. And I don't know if I should say anything now. I think maybe you should go through the uh, applications first and then the mail. But I do think the process needs to be. Would you like? No, you feel free to to, um, to address the issue if you like. Um, I think I said it all in the letter. Okay. And I think we handed it out to everybody. Okay. Okay, but I just you know don't want. You're to welcome. To, you're welcome to make any any. It's it's really quite open ended. I mean, obviously we appreciate not a half hour, but if you, no, if you I, but I but I want to make sure you're heard. When you get to the, the comments, I think uh, I I might say something later. Okay. But I, I if, do think it needs to be tightened up. As I said to you uh, in correspondence, if your 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 letter came at a point that was too soon, too close to today's meeting to put it onto the right. formal agenda, but we we have time now to put your letter onto the formal agenda for our next meeting, and and we would be very happy to uh, okay, discuss your concerns at that point. The next meeting would be too late. Um, it, okay. It, and I apologize, I have to operate by the city's okay. public it's guidelines. Not, my concerns are the fact that too many people give permits, and not everything comes to the historic committee. You know, Sarah can say, yes, go ahead. Carolyn can say, go ahead. Louie can say, go ahead. And there's no coordination whatsoever. And not everything comes to the, the historic committee. So people who think they have permission and do not bring their historic home to the historic committee are, are just doing things without uh, looking at the historic standards. And I'd really like to see that tightened up. And that's all I want to say right okay. now. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. 
any um, response or, or, or um, other issues? Is there, are there any other public comments? I was going to say we haven't seen that letter, so I don't know what. We haven't seen that letter. Okay. So I, I can't really comment it, it, on what the it was, or the issues It was a letter were. encouraging and expressing that, that um, the, the enforcement or uh, our observation of um, community preservation of, of the local historic district uh, permission, permissive regulations, regulations permitting certain work, um, uh, were not being observed and uh, needed to be observed. I believe in relation to a part one of the property for us this evening, so we have a chance to to, um, to discuss that um, this evening. But we are concerned about the, the appropriate op observation and procedure and uh, work with the um, uh, uh, planning department and with the, um, uh, the building uh, inspector's office. Um, the next item on the agenda uh, is request uh, for a local historic district certificate of appropriateness for chimney removal of 159 Elm Street, parcel 31B-162. Um, and Chris Thompson is the applicant. Chris. Um, and so has everyone read the 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 uh, narrative? Yeah. Okay. Um, I've never been in this position before, obviously, and so I wasn't sure. Please, yeah, please review for the it, sake of. So everybody, so everybody has has seen seen my my narrative. Um, I think the only thing that I would have to add to that narrative is um, that I just want to clarify for this committee that um, although I was granted a, a, a building permit. By down, you know, by the by the uh, by the building department, um, and that the chimney was was the existing chimney that was taken down um, was in fact uh, you know a facsimile of what had been there. We're not even sure how accurate it actually was. It's in the wrong color. It's the wrong brick, and some detailing seems to be off from from what was originally there. We're not really sure. Despite all of those things, and obviously, as you read in the narrative, my understanding that it was a reasonable thing for me to move forward with, um, that I should have approached the commission first, and um, that I'm, I made a mistake, and I'm very sorry about that. Um, clearly, my relationship with you is ongoing here in the city is extremely important to me, um, and you better be sure that something like this is certainly not going to happen again. Um, you know, for a if anyone has any questions for me, I'm happy to answer those. Questions from the members? I think you, all, you said also in your narrative that your understanding was that it wasn't really, it wasn't really visible from a public way, even though you now say maybe three houses on Langworthy could see it, but that it, it so there, My you know, were misunderstanding or it was a misunderstanding, part, yes. Yeah. It was a misunderstanding. Yeah. I certainly was not trying to skirt any yeah. process at all. Um, and I did not take, I did not know the the part of that, the ordinance, that it's any public way. That was what I didn't know. And it's, it's the second half of language. It's probably 10 houses or so. Other comments or questions? I think we have an opportunity here to make lemonade out of a lemon. I mean, wouldn't it be prudent, you know, Chris Thompson, well-known fellow around town doing historic preservation work, and a lot of it pro bono. Obviously, this isn't this is his intention, but what's why don't we be proactive here and maybe get a list of likely contractors who do work in historic to uh, send out a letter to remind them of the parameters, and maybe they're not aware of the of all the ins and outs of working in those neighborhoods, and, and, and also how the neighborhood, the historic neighborhood, has grown. And, and to send out a letter to, 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 so that this sort of thing won't happen. Mm -hmm. um, sounds like a good point. It might be. Might be a motion for 
subsequent to, to this particular discussion because of the concerns of the general commission activity uh, of developing public awareness. But let's, let's it turns, to me, it sounds like a great idea, but let's, let's hold on that for a moment. Um, uh, because it was certainly, in this particular case, there was no lack of information about the, the um, uh, local historic district on the part of the contractor. He was probably the best informed in the city. Um, any other questions? Yeah, I just had a question. Um, if this was not located in a historic district, would a building permit or any other kind of permit be required? No. So in other words, there was no triggering mechanism that would send you or any other contractor That's true. to the Historical Commission. Yeah, you're correct. But you, you did get a building permit for the interior work. Yes. And right. I think you all, I subsequently sent that it didn't make it in the original uh, folder but I sent it before and after the, the plans the floor plans that were submitted to the building department mm -hmm. um, which does not specify that a chimney comes down specifically because yes it's not required in another context mm -hmm. but it, it does show on the print yeah. that it's yeah a different feature well I would think that this would be a difficulty in the administration of the ordinance in that there's absolutely no reason why you would need to come in and get a building permit to do that one piece of work. Therefore, there would be no review triggered. Now, I've worked with a lot of historic districts around the country, and just about every one of them says that review is required prior to issuing a building permit. So a building permit triggers the review process. My and I may I just a yeah. question to you. Are, are we saying that in, in Northampton, no building permit is required to to take down a chimney? Yes, that is true. That's correct? Yeah. To erect one. And you, did, I, did I not hear you say that you have approached the building department about this project? I, I have a permit, yes. I have an accepted permit from them and working with a permit. I'm confused then. Why do you have a permit if no one is required? Oh, no, no, not, no, just for the, pro the, the entire project. Oh, I see. Okay. It's pretty extensive No permit project, for the chimney. But no specific right. permit for the chimney. Correct. So, you see, that, that's a flaw right. in the administration. Because for the sake of those listening, the building, the application of the building for a building permit or, or building demolishment um, is what triggers the uh, the building inspector to uh, present the case to the to the uh, historical uh, commission because uh, um, no permit will be issued if uh, if the building inspector uh, sees uh, any typical triggers uh, right. of, uh, uh, of appropriateness um, uh, until we uh, make that determination. But but in this case, the building department was reviewing it for the things that were. Subject to their jurisdiction of wiring and I don't know what other types of things they need. And they, they just didn't see that the chimney was coming down so because that doesn't actually need a permit. Keep on, I'm sorry. So they, they didn't see that the chimney was going to be removed because it didn't require a building permit. Were the rest of the was the rest of the work internal? Yes. Yeah. Okay, so that's another reason why they wouldn't uh, the why they would not have right. Uh, triggered it. Right. But but Sarah, if in this work, you indicated say that you're taking down one of the main chimneys, which clearly affects the look right. of the house. Yeah. Would that have triggered that coming before the historic district or the historical commission, Sarah? I, I would think that they probably would have noticed that because right. it's a structural right. chimney. Right. So they would have right. said, "Gee, you know, you really need to go before the historic commission." Right. So generally, the process right. is someone applies for a building permit, and if there's anything in it that's subject to the historical commission review. Right then Louie will not issue the building right. and will require right. 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 Can you remind the commission of the approximate date of the structure, the primary date? Um, I think, wait, no, do you know? Yeah, it, well, it's the only 19, 1917, mm -hmm. um, there's two parts to house, and one part was built slightly after. So the main block is, is 1917. 1917 with at least some part of the L and then there's some understanding that it was extended back from there further but fairly in fairly short order I think it was done 1917 primarily correct what was the date of the chimney the I chimney? believe well the part that we took down was only six years old but the the chimney that had been there previously I believe was original to the structure 
clearly of secondary nature by all accounts. The role that it felt originally. It was utility. It was the kitchen. It would have been, you know, the kitchen stove. Yeah, kitchen stove. It was off the back, and um, you know, it was made with in clearly inferior brick. I mean, why should a chimney be failing after only a hundred years? I was pretty floored actually that the previous homeowner reported it was it was really failing pretty dramatically for him to go through all of that expense and effort to um, actually tear it down and start again. Because it was and the work you took down was six years old? Yeah. yeah. Oh, well, 2006. No, it was 2006. So whatever, whatever. Ten years old. Yeah, fine. Okay. All right. the, we're going to start to see more and more chimneys disappearing as modern heating systems go into houses. The modern heating systems don't need it's not this case for that particular chimney, but in general, modern heating systems don't need chimneys, they're not supposed to be in chimneys. And so these, these chimneys become an opportunity for people to increase some living space in their closets and their house in general. And, and maybe there's a, another opportunity for a, a bigger conversation about chimneys in general because they're, they're not going to fall under the purview of the building department for a permit. Well, that seems to be a problem. I think the flaw here is with the building code that this work does not require a permit. And as far as I'm concerned, not requiring a permit, you know, you did what was reasonable, you went ahead and did it, you didn't need to come before this historical commission. Um, should have, <laughs> but there's no compelling legal reason that forces you or any other contractor to do that. And that's why I think the um, building permit ordinance needs to be explored to bring in these things that would trigger a review, mm -hmm. such as any change to the exterior appearance of a building within the historic district shall require historical Review um, whether or not a permit is needed, but you know, that's that's shaky. That's well, something well, has changed certainly because we're, we're in a situation right. here where um, you're, you're I, I think, you're quite right that technically no permit was required, yeah. therefore, it didn't, never came on an issue that comes before the historical commission. No fault, How, however, <coughs> the, 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 you can imagine any number of the houses in the district. Um, some of the, the Grand Victorian and so forth, suddenly without their chimney, those are changes which uh, none of us would, would approve uh, uh, because of the magnitude of, of the change of the appearance of, of the house. And, and as a result, we can't let this uh, continue. So it needs to be, I think, um, with great appreciation for the work done by the, the building department, we, we, we need to collaborate um, and, and work with them and the planning department to um, uh, Ensure that there is more um, information, or that the, that when somebody applies to remove the chimney, um, that that triggers a notice to the historical commission, uh, even if it is not requiring a. Uh, well, you know, the issue is if, if if somebody could apply simply tear down the chimney, in which case they wouldn't come to any permit. Yeah. Um, and, well, um, what's sort of interesting is that this, that this chimney that had been already been rebuilt just a few years ago, there's no permit. He did not. He did not come before the commission. He did not pull a, a permit. You know, a, he wouldn't. Didn't because I, I reviewed all the permits that have been pulled on this building in the last forever, and there've been well, very we few. Need to, we need to work on this, and, and I think Bruce is right. Maybe have to occur within the uh, uh, regulations concerning the historic district itself. Um, but, um, you know, and, and come to think of it, if, if, if well, Bruce, you have you Well, I'm just going to say the application process, as outlined in the um, Elm Street design standards, says no building or structure within the Elm Street Historic District shall be constructed, altered, or demolished in any way that affects exterior architectural features visible from a public way. So this ordinance deals with it. There's nothing that triggers compliance with the ordinance by requiring a building permit for any construction, alteration, or demolition mm -hmm. 
in the uh, Elm Street district. So I think that's where the language is missing. And I think it's it, uh, um, you know, something that you know should be looked at because that that's what probably would require an ordinance change, wouldn't you think? Sarah? Yeah, and depending on how specific the, the language change would be. I'm, so, yeah, so what you read is directly from the ordinance, but it, it's just hard because it, the enforcement is really with the building department in most cases, because most exterior work does require the permit. Yeah. But there's small things like, like this and some other things that oh, they just don't require. These are things that affect the architectural character of the building and consequently the district. Um, so I, I would think that you know, if we were taking a look at the process, the weak link is the uh, building permit ordinance. These are these historic districts. Yeah. Um, so I don't think you did anything wrong. What you did was very good coming in to... It, it strikes me too that we want to make sure that our ordinances are written so that we are we prevent this kind of situation where the solution, the, 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 the punitive solution would be to make a contract or rebuild the, con the, the missing chimney uh, or rebuild um, something of that, of that sort because that, that is a, um, that, that's an onerous process uh, to, to impose. So um, um, it is much better to preempt damage to a building uh, from an architectural standpoint than to than to uh, require its um, um, kind of uh, recreation uh, to the best of people's memory. We want we like to do it beforehand. So um, it, it also I think is better for the public acceptance of an historic district if we are not um, creating onerous rules of that sort. Um, nonetheless, uh, here we have competing uh, interpretations. It seems to me we have. The fact that the ordinance does say that nothing should be changed, and we have at the same time the fact that the, the typical trigger um, is the application for a building permit. Um, well, I, I think the appropriate language could well be that uh, any uh, work on a structure located within the district that alters um, the uh, appearance requires a building permit. And now it doesn't. And so that would be building permit language. You know, our ordinance mm -hmm. is good. Okay. <laughs> it's the building permit that doesn't require it uh, within a historic district. And then the public education, because I'm sure that half the people who own property in the district don't know they're in the district. And 90% of the contractors in town have never heard of Elm Street history. So that's so, comes back to my basic premise that it would be it would be easier logistically easier to just outreach the 50 contractors that do this sort of work just to photocopy that page yeah. give them the link from the city website for the whole booklet and tell people that this is the easy way to do this please if you're going to do any work in this district exterior wise talk to the building but at the, at, I agree with you completely. I think it's a good suggestion. Again, um, we also come back to ordinances, however, and, and currently there's no ordinance that would require them um, to get a permit uh, if they uh, are, are going to be doing exterior work of, of some in some categories. Um, but a, so. a chimney is, is clearly. I mean, this work was subject to the ordinance. It just no one no one thought about it and thought it had already come down. So, but that doesn't make it any less subject to the ordinance. Correct. Um, just so we can consider this in the, the realm of the design guidelines. Can you talk about what you did to the roof once the chimney came down? Yes. Um, I hired the best slater in the valley to come and match the slate. He did a fabulous job. Completely matches. And a copper ridge, which was what was there. Um, so there's... It, it matches pretty seamlessly. Other thoughts? Well, I'm just wondering, I mean, it's, it's like we can't, I mean, sometimes when things are done without a permit, we either, you know, we feel like, well, that journey shouldn't have come down, we make somebody put it back up. I think it's clearly not something we would, it seems likely that we probably would have approved for this journey to come down. Right. 
to begin with. I mean, if, if it had come before us, uh, given its age and appearance. Um, so it seems like there's no penalty we could impose. Um, so I don't, I don't know that there's anything we need to, to do or to say other than this is a learning experience for everybody, and I, I, I just don't know what I don't know what steps the, we could the commission take. should should look at this like it hasn't happened yet, and if if the work is considered appropriate, then issue a certificate oh, okay. of appropriateness. And if, right. if it's not appropriate and isn't something that would have been approved, then okay. maybe a, that solution might be appropriate here. Um, this, it's irregular for us to take comments during during our committee uh, discussion, but if, if we can keep them short, I'd be happy to take comments from the from the, the tenders. I was yeah. going to say exactly what she said, but she said it better, so I'm, I'm good. Thank okay. you. Okay, she's very good. In that case, I would move that we vote to issue a, a certificate of appropriateness. Is that the right term? Yes. Certificate of appropriateness for this um, batch in the Okay, there's that motion on the floor. Is there a second? There's a second. Is there a discussion? Um, my, my comments would be, um, as part of discussion uh, prior to us voting, that, that um, this case has highlighted uh, a, an area of, that should not exist in the current uh, regulation, which is that um, work can be, which has material uh, impact on the view of a structure within the district from a public way. Um, did not require a, a building permit, and as a result, it never came before us. And, and whether we would have permitted this, the change is, is, a, is a moot point. I, I'm not arguing in any way, but um, nonetheless, this all happened in good faith. But um, it doesn't comport with the with the orderly proceedings of how this uh, this organization should should work. Um, and leads us to the resolve to make changes in the ordinances uh, so that this kind of thing won't happen again. Um, I, I absolutely have no intention of, of making people across the, uh, the district uh, go to vast expense to rebuild um, areas that were small and made in good faith. On the other hand, um, I can think of any number of changes that people might make that wouldn't pull a, uh, that wouldn't require a permit to be pulled uh, but that would still materially change the appearance of their of their house for brackets and et cetera. You you know better than anyone. Sure. Um, and and this is perhaps the um, the clarion call to, for us to wake up and to recognize that we need to tighten this up significantly. I think the um, uh, the public uh, members of the public who have raised this issue as a concern have a legit, legitimate concern. Uh, I think they were right in in, in raising their concerns. Um, because um, through, I think, no, in, no, no ill intention, things didn't quite work the way they're supposed to work. And I think you'd agree with that yeah. on that. Yes. Yeah. Um, so I, um, I take no, I have no fault whatsoever with, with the concerns. Uh, again, I think they were um, uh, sincere and legitimate. Um, nonetheless, I, uh, uh, you know, I think that, that the, our primary effort now needs to go Toward rectifying this 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 situation uh, broadly, uh, um, and uh, this has this has uh, been an interesting case for us. Um, okay, there is a, a motion on the floor that's been uh, it's been seconded. We've had discussion. Okay, I okay. call a motion. All those in favor, please say aye. aye. Opposed. The motion passes, and the uh, specifically the. Um, Historical Commission has uh, deemed, has given a, uh, a um, certificate of appropriateness uh, for the work that you did. Don't do it again. <laughs> Goodness, so, <laughs> the point is, is that anybody can do what was done because no permit was required. We're no work permit. On that. There's no review. We're work on that. So I have a, I have a question. This can't happen again. If I, I do have a question. If if somebody submits a permit to demolish a building that's before the certain year, I don't even remember what year it is, 1900. 1900. It, 
bam, just bypasses the, the commission, I mean the building department, and goes directly to the historical commission, right? No. So uh, a, a permit gets filed with the building department, and then uh, the building department looks and says this this is either on the list of 1901 to 1939 properties it needs review, or it's we it's most likely built before 1900. You need to talk to the historic commission. Right. So we, because what I'm saying is because you can't demolish a, a building without. Right. So what I'm saying is that immediately what I'm saying is their antenna immediately goes up mm -hmm. yeah. because of the date. Why couldn't all the buildings that are in a historic district? Just automatically. Doesn't matter what you want. I to think do. I heard that Bruce say that. The end of the yeah. exterior change. It, it, it would have to be part of the ordinance. There's an ordinance requirement a permit to demolish. So you got to troop down to the building inspector's right. office if you want to tear down a building. So there's not a requirement that you have to troop down to the building inspector's office if you want to knock an old chimney down. Right. So we need to get it right. where right. any action within the historic district triggers a response by right. the historic district. Right. Yeah. But and, that and, is an and educational thing yeah. and a legal thing right. that has to be worked out. Yeah. And, and in this case, the building department absolutely knew that 159 Elm Street is within the district, right. but they just didn't right. see right. any work right. on the application that was subject to our review. Okay. Well, I, I would ask, um, I, I have no, no basis to, to ask for your but I would ask that if there is a photograph of the house with the chimney on it, that the photograph I, be in an archival form be filed. I tried historic, to look. I, I did a lot of sleuthing around to library. try to find one because I had been told that this one was a very poor facsimile. And so I had started to, to go through and I was looking at earlier MLS listings and I tried some Google Earth stuff and I, I found one that was a terrible photograph that looks like it actually has a much simpler profile than the one that would that if, we you, took down, if you find that one that's even a simpler a, yeah if you find one that's even no, I agree I wish we had a photo if you find one that has an identical construction even if it's from a different building um, uh, simply to identify that this yeah. is what existed and, right. and mark where it existed on the building so that there is an historical record of its existence and its yeah. appearance yeah okay all right thank you okay thank you The next item. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, public comment. Yeah. Well, I, just want yeah. to, I just want to thank you. I'm the homeowner, and I bought the house because it's from 1917. You know, I, I, that's my favorite time period. My previous house on Harrison Avenue was the same year. I love it, and I hired Chris Thompson because he understood that. You know, he was someone at his website. If you, I mean, you all know, but I just pulled up his website. And I actually had a friend who worked with him. That was all I knew. I didn't even shop around. It says historic preservation. So he knew I wanted to make some changes and knew a lot about old, you know. So it was just completely, and I, even before I bought the house, asked some questions about what I could do to the front. I, I understood the basic premise, but it just nev it never occurred to us. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And I wanted to keep the chimney. Actually, it was too expensive to take down. I tried at length to keep the chimney, um, but it wasn't. It wouldn't, Thank you. It wouldn't hold. I, I need to cut you short yeah, because of our, of our time. Let me let me just finish by saying this is not a situation, and I just want to enumerate it, that has anything to do with confidence. No, I know okay? not. Yet. It has nothing to do with intent. There was no intent to deceive. Right. All of the failings have to do with institutional right. failings right. that occur at this end. And we take that seriously, and we are going to rectify that. But you have highly competent uh, employees. You have zero bad intent on your part or the uh, contractor's part. Um, we're confident of all that. Nonetheless, the complaint was absolutely justifiable. And we intend to fix the source of that complaint so that this won't occur again. again. Okay, the next item on the agenda is the request for local historic district certificates of appropriateness for garage renovation, proposed work to include the placement of roof, windows, garage doors, and trim, and modifications to sidewalk and access for 83, <coughs> excuse me, Round Hill Road, parcel 31B-005, 
right builders of the applicant. Good evening. How are you? Welcome. Thank you. Um, I'm Roger Cooney from Wright Builders. And I have some uh, show and tell to go with. Uh, this replicates a lot of the information I have already in the application. It's just a little easier to look at. perspective this little arrow indicates if you're standing on the street you can look um, at the front of the side of the house and so you get a view of the garage from this direction and that's what is everyone on the board familiar with the front is. Mm -hmm. yeah okay. everybody familiar with that's the former president's yeah. house there. right yeah. at, at Clark School that's correct um, and so it's uh, and and so in this vista is you know kind of looking across uh, the, the, the wall um, so it gives you a sense of the lay of the land um, yeah, I think this will probably be more useful. Um, and so, everybody's got their bearings. Um, what the structure itself, physically, dimensionally, will not change. Um, the copper roof system is failing, um, and it's it's seen its lifespan. So, uh, the proposal is is to replace that roof with new copper roof, um, so-called standing scene and in its new state it'll look like that um, in its finished state it will it will get that you know, green patina uh, over time um, this rendering is just an approximation so it'll be similar to what's there but not identical to what's there um, this type of system has has these ribs applied and uh, it has an internal gutter which has failed and, and so there's the water is infiltrating. So um, the proposal is to have a new exterior gutter, not unlike what is on the main house, which has an exterior gutter. And it'll be copper. It'll be a half round of the downspout um, connected to an underground system that's in the back of the building. So that's that piece. Um, the garage doors we think are not original to the building. Um, we, we think that likely this was infill. And mm -hmm. historically, there was there was a caretaker, there was a driver. There's actually a room in there and a bathroom, and so on. And that, while it's not the exterior, it's the information that goes away. So the garage becomes much more functional. And the intent is to um, take and deconstruct that, and then install new garage doors with lights on them, so-called windows lights. Could you possibly pass that around in the Absolutely. And. Uh, and uh, and also has some transom lights above. Where so there's currently a white. Current where these current white bands yeah. are, and so um, that that facade will change. But we think actually it's an it's an to uh, to the property to 
to the, the overall feeling of the building. Um, this window will be removed and the masonry cut and a door will be installed there so that there can be a, you know, a passage to door to have to open it actually. What would the door look like? The door is, uh, is a product, I think, I think you have a cut sheet, it's a Marvin uh, product. Um, and so you can see that in the rendering as well. We will have a window in it. Um, um, so, so to stay on the garage door for a second, I'll come back to the door. Um, our, our client, the uh, Venice, would like it to be white. So the garage door color will remain white, similar to what's there. Um, the new uh, passage door and the windows would go from white to this um, ebony color. The existing house, main house, has hope windows in it back, back from the turn of the century, the next couple of centuries. Um, and they are kind of an anodized black color as well. So we think, even though there's a change there, that that would complement and actually enhance and make it more you know, cohesive with, with, the main, with the main house, with the main building. Could you remind the commission on the approximate construction date of the overall? Um, it's, this goes back to free electricity, free gas, prepaid road. Um, so this is 18 aught. Wasn't it? It was 19 something. 19 something, yes. just turn of the century. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so, it was designed by I. N. Fab Stokes. And so, you know, that gives you a sort of a. The house itself would go before gas and, and yeah. yeah, and I'm, I'm told that um, actually they paved the road up to it, and that there was some boiler in the main part of the house, and then there was gas installed so that they could generate their own stuff there, um, mm -hmm. and eventually, you know, that that came to build and all that. So it was it was ahead of its ahead of its time. That's, was that original copper roof original to the construction of the garage? Not certain. The house has a mix of slate and copper on it. So the, the main body of the house uh, roof is, is slate, and then there, the main entry has copper, and there's other locations. So it's, you know, this is probably not original, but we don't have any information to tell us what was there back then. And the intention is in trying to replicate that, but put something that you know would be similar to people would be our customers having seen the last 50 or 100 years. This is probably a 50-year system that's on there, like whether it was copied before the um, The intent is not to change the roof line or any of that, um, but admittedly, this this detail will change a bit with the half round of copper. We're going to replicate the cove and. and the crown is on there and keep that look all the way around. Um, so, you know, the windows will go, as I mentioned, to this color and the door as well. And I think you'll see there's cut sheets that, in, in the handout, um, this middle that, that articulate that a little bit more. Um, the, um, there's a bulkhead that's kind of visible. Um, you know, there's, there's this wall here, but you see this roof over, there's a, a sort of a covered way down to a very small basement where the boiler was. And the proposal is to demolish that, eliminate it, retains the brick wall behind. It's not integral to it, so the, that roof can come, come off. And then we would install um, you know, standard bill coat bulkheads. So there still would be access to there. The is that visible from the public plane, that bulkhead? It's really hard to see. I mean, you'd have to kind of, you'd have to, you really can't see it from there. You'd have to be very tall. Or you have to be in the entrance bank. I mean, you could probably see it from the building next door, but someone walking down the, down the street, I don't think they'd be able to see it. Bilco bulkheads are, are, are the other, or, or uh, the other manufacturer, I forgot who it is, um, are, are notoriously modern era um, items. Is there any way to uh, make that more age appropriate given the fact that we were looking at apparently an eight, uh, 1880s? Uh, so, would that be something that would be wood? Would be, I don't know. Yeah. Um, so, I, you know, it's a good question. Um, it, you know, clearly, 
You can see that roof. We're just trying to do our job here and everything yeah. visual from public yeah. way. You'll see that roof. You won't see you won't see the new ball pit for all intents and purposes, I don't think. And if you appropriately colored it will not be visible. And they'd like it to be a brick red to yeah. to complement the brick that's there and, and, and that can okay. drop out visually. Um, the um, the chimney, speaking of which, will go away. The intent is to demolish that. And I'm sorry, I'm just sorry. What? The chimney will be demolished and will go away. It's not, it serves no utilitarian purpose. <laughs> well. <laughs> so you'll, you'll have an opinion about that, but I just want to tell you that our, our intent is to, is to remove it, um, if, if that's allowed. Um, and uh, um, so really the two, the two demolition pieces are that. It would go away, so there's, there is a change. But, um, you know, the... Uh, the boiler's been offline for a very long time. And, uh, and those kinds of things become an infiltration, water infiltration issue. Um, so, um, the other item are the windows. So it, it goes to it, there's a double, there are double hungs all the way around the structure, so it becomes a new Marvin uh, clad exterior, wood interior, uh, high performance window that would go there. Um, the client may opt to just leave the windows that are there there, but uh, part of that is, is to be determined. So that's that piece. Um, this item over here will be demolished, which is a uh, encasing an old steam pipe that probably fed off of a central heating system at Clark. Um, again, it's, it serves no purpose. Um, and actually, we'll We'll clean that up and then the brick will come back. Um, and uh, what else can I tell you? In terms of lighting, we're proposing to add a lantern light um, uh, that will illuminate the walkway so we'll be mounted and we'll replace this light here, which is failed. It's very similar in look and feel. And then there would be two of these on the uh, on the front of the garage, the downlight, um, the downlight on the two garage doors, and there would be one with the personnel door. So um, there are lights there now. They're um, in various states of disrepair. They're up in in the soffit. Um, so that would be the feel for it. Can I ask you another question about sure. looking at one of these pictures here? Yeah. Of the, this area to the side, this is in another, this is somebody else's property. Right, that's correct. And that's and that's the, part of Clark School and it's being developed by others now. Okay. So, so, this, so this, like, chain of fence and stuff is part of the process? And stuff well, no, it's, it's, it was there. Mm -hmm. This That's a good question. So their property line actually stops at the brick wall mm -hmm. and then it jogs out and then jogs back again. So technically this walkway mm -hmm. and that anchor fence and that retaining wall is not on there. It's not part of their property. It's not part of Clark School. It's part of Clark School. Oh, it is part of Clark School. School. It's not it's part, part of the Vets property. Sure. And, and what about this um, iron fence or gate or something? Right. On the picture? So that that's there. There's you know there's gates that open, um, you know, that allow you to enter. And then there's also a gate that runs along the back. So that, that'll all remain. Okay. And you know, it, and that color is similar to what we would pick up. You know. this, this privacy wall here would be, or the anti that wall would be taken out. Yeah, it's actually more of a, you know, it's a wood case that goes around a pipe that's inside. Yeah. So you actually can walk by it. Oh, OK. Um, and there's a diamond plate that, you know, kind of covers a, a, a void that's down below that will so that if someone has walked across it, it won't be a hazard. Now the, the uh, <coughs> dormer that you intend to demolish is on the back. It's on the and back. is that visible from the street on the on, on the far side? It's not. So I brought this along too. And I don't know if anybody has okay. a copy of this. So this view is looking at the back of the building. And the dormer is up here. Somewhere. And the dormer is a small dormer up here. Mm -hmm. and so, Again, that doesn't serve any purpose, um, so we're proposing that that would go away, but we, we think that's not a good use right now. So 
so. Just don't move. This is another phase because you know there's no like there. Right. So so these are the sure. So this this these two faces are the same. They're just different perspectives. Right. Right. Different perspectives. So there's actually. Could you make the make the question public? Okay. I was just. You're asking for clarification of, I guess I didn't understand the two angles or perspectives I'm seeing because I'm seeing different things in the picture. Yeah. Um, so there's two walls. So. Um, there's two walls that that bind the that bind the property. Um, one runs right along the street, mm -hmm. and then there's another one interior to that, and that's what you're seeing in this picture. Um, this is the inner wall. And there's a walkway behind it that allows access to the house. So I've actually took the picture up over the wall to look in. So someone could see that if they were walking along. So I mean, that might be what's confusing it for you. Um, so this comes all the way out, and then there's gates on it that open to the garage. And then the wall that's not in this view is actually in, in, the, in the foreground. Does that make more yeah, sense? Um, Does any, so I want to put first things first. Do any of you have questions that are specific? To require the specific viewing of these. I think for y'all, everybody pretty much seen everything they need to see. Yeah. Then, uh, yeah. okay, the community members can probably go return to their return to their okay. seats. Um, second question is to determine uh, what aspects of proposed changes, requested changes, are under our purview and which aspects are not. Um, and it's it's the comment of the applicant that the rear of the building is not visible from any public way. Um, and we certainly have to take your word for it since I have not been down that, but it's so low that I can't imagine you can see um, above the gutter line to uh, to see a small um, uh, dormer, but I, I, I just have to take your word for that. Any, any other comments on that specific issue on, on purview of, of, uh, of our Review. So the the, the area of our of our review is primarily the front and side, um, that's sort of the door, the main door side, and that that end side. Is that correct? And what's visible from the street from from uh, uh, Round Hill Road? I've been to that property when it was on the market. I bet. Yeah. And, um, this is an extensive remake, but I think it's completely called for. I think the materials they're using is, is fine by me. The, uh, there was a major redo of that brick patio on the wall on the back side several years ago, but that never, never came here. Okay. The, the, uh, we have to confine our discussion to the specific uh, changes made by the petitioner tonight. Um, so the, the, um, let's see if we can approach it with uh, some degree of um, um, uh, procedural sense. So the, let's take the, 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 the um, go from the ground up. Um, the uh, proposal is to replace the garage doors with, I think, full length garage doors. Yeah, the lights are in the upper panel. And okay, then, couple and then panels, as they are now. Um, and, and to add a row of lights above uh, the doors where there is currently a probably sort of a plywood panel. Okay. Um, any discussion on that? We'll vote as an entirety, but I, any discussion on those items? Okay. Next, let's consider the change of the existing window to the left of those doors into a doorway uh, with the use of a period-appropriate door uh, as a replacement for the window. Is there a discussion of that? Okay. Yeah, uh, there's a proposal for the removal of a wing wall uh, on the um, right side I want it is that the west side 
Um, um, north, south, east, west. I think this this is the southern. Okay. This I'll, I'll just say the side. Yeah. Side. Um, of of the property and uh, any discussion on that. It's currently apparently covering a pipe. Okay. Um, is there any other looking from the from the face at the top of the wall downward? Is there any any discussion or concern or comment regarding proposed changes? Well, it's also the addition of lights. I think it's also the addition of lights. So the lights. There aren't lights there the, now. I think so, there yeah. are lights there, but, but they're but not. They are still there. They're not a wall-mounted light. Right. Oh, they're, okay. they're kind of like so a satellite. So it's changing the light. And I, okay, so a, a sconce will be added mm -hmm. uh, that is um, with an attempt at period mm -hmm. appropriateness, given the the absence, mm -hmm. the necessary <laughs> absence of a sconce is up for that period, but uh, uh, certainly uh, not out of character for Georgian a revival uh, uh, structure. Um, what about uh, the bulkhead? Any comments, questions? Okay. Now you get to the roof. Um, any comments or questions about the appropriateness of the uh, material and design of the roof uh, replacement? Okay. It seems reasonable. I mean, I know it's a change, but it seems Okay, I've been holding off on the thorny issue, the chimney. <laughs> no problem. It's non-functional. Uh, it's probably going to uh, create more problems than it's worth. And visibly, riding by on a fast horse and high wind, you wouldn't need to. <laughs> let, me, let me play, let me um, play devil's advocate for a moment. Craig raised the issue earlier of there being a number of times in the the district when uh, chimneys may want to come down, and I, I think we could often think of a, a number of uh, houses whose, in the absence of the chimneys, would be quite, um, uh, they, 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 they would really uh, lose something. Yeah, I would say and, and, and at what point do we, uh, do we blow the whistle? Uh, I would say that, in my opinion, this is not a character-defining element of the architecture. Well, your opinion is quite well-informed, and I appreciate the, the opinion. Um, other other comments or questions about the chimney? But actually, is, it, is it necessary? To, I mean, I assume it's in decent shape. Is it simply for the convenience of the roofer? Uh, no, there's internal to the structure, um, and I may have given you a whole plan so I don't recall. Um, there's, um, there's walls that define where the bathroom was and where the uh, driver's room was. Um, so, if this is, you know, if this is the front, your view yeah. front, and here's the garage doors, we're proposing taking the window yeah. out. We want to deconstruct to make this more functional. Um, and so here's here's the half bath and here's just the driver's room um, and a kind of utilitarian sink there. The chimney's right here. And so it, it is kind of integral to what we want to demolish inside. This brick, the brick look is all. Are you taking out that entire L wall? All of this. And making it, you're sort of lofting the entire space so it's going to be an open space. So it'll allow this to be an open space. And, you know, if they had a smaller vehicle or something, or it just it makes this a uh, much more useful space for, for potty. Uh, and where is the um, where's the heat source? Is it underneath that, or is it's it? Unheated. Is, what? It, it's unheated. It's unheated and it'll remain unheated. No, the original, the, when it was? So the heat source back in the day, there's, yeah. a, there's a boiler, old boiler down. Oh, oh, I see, okay. So right that's, this, that's where boiler. that bulkhead you know, will be, and that will retain that basement area, and that's where the I see, okay. That's what the boiler is. So you took out the furnace room and, and created a... You create a space here that's not going to be useful. So, yeah. Is there a vent stack for that bathroom situation there? There is an existing plumbing vent stack, and there will be a new vent stack. And what will what, that... What would it feed? What would it, what's its purpose be? So there's going to be, uh, right here, there's going to be a utilitarian sink. So this is like a little potty table over, you know, and then you'll be able to wash off the, you know, the tools that you for planting your flowers and such. And so that, that'll be a new plumbing stack. David, you know, there's 
zooming up in altitude a little bit, you broach the subject of this is yet another chimney, and what are we going to do about this? And I would like to expand your vision, because we're going to start to see this. We're going to see a lot of chimneys coming down because they're, they're no longer needed as modern heating systems get plugged in. Yeah. But similarly, people are going to want to put solar arrays on their south-facing roof. Is that an appropriate thing? In the That's quite, a, as you know, quite a matter of discussion uh, among preservationists across the state. Uh, and, and important, but I think perhaps for tonight is somewhat, it's not within the time frame we have, right. but a very important issue. I thought you were also going to bring up possibly the, the issue of Material Events Act, because that also is important. We certainly don't want to see Schedule 40 plastics sticking up from yeah. uh, and historically. That, that's where you're going. And so if, um, you know, the one that's there is a cast iron type. Can, can you just cast, cast iron? It's cast iron. What is there now? And if, if that's something that we have to... That any any waste stack would have to be cast iron. I'm uh, quite adamant about that because it, otherwise, otherwise a black or, black or white plastic stack would be um, unacceptable. Yeah. Um, other comments about, and I'll take a, we're going to be taking a vote in just a moment, um, but are there other comments about the, um, the question of the dormer and the question of the chimney? We can vote on this as an entirety. So the dormer's in the back, not Normally, apparently not visible. Not visible. Yeah. Street. Is it visible from Crescent Street? Is that the back? The other? It's in Round Hill Road. Um, Crescent Street is Crescent on Street the is back side. Um, so Crescent at the angle, you know, there's quite an elevation change. So I don't think you can see it from Crescent. Plus there's trees, there's, there's pine trees there as well. So I think, I think that there's probably guessing like three or four story difference between the present street level. And it's a small dormer, it's not it's like a vent type dormer. It probably stands off the roof at foot if that. And so, you know, the sight line, um, the sight line would really prevent that being being visible from down yeah. below. Yeah. 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 It's not even visible. You can, yeah. you can pick up. You can pick up. Oh, you can pick up the chimney, and that's standing almost at grade. You know, there's a two-story height here. Mm -hmm. so you see the chimney. You can't see the door at all. And Crescent Street is way down grade. You know, from that. Mm -hmm. So I don't. Just looking at the street view from Crescent Street, you can't see anything. Yeah. We Google Earth. Yeah. <laughs> Um, okay, that's right. I need to call a vote. Bruce, I would like the motion. I'm going to ask you to make the motion, but for the sake of precedent, if you, if you will potentially be looking at finely horrible, beautifully constructed large chimneys that we absolutely are not going to allow to be torn down. For the sake of addressing that kind of thing, with you know, addressing the issue, can you frame the motion um, so that it reflects? the relative um, appendix like quality of this particular chimney. Uh, you said it better than I can uh, earlier. Well, I, I, I think that the motion should um, uh, accept the application as presented with uh, uh, understanding that um, also uh, uh, the commission has reviewed uh, the chimney and the existing chimney and existing dormer and feel that they are not um, contributed to the architectural character of the building and therefore um, they may be removed as part of the uh, proposed work. So that in a sense I think says that we accept the application uh, and that we've addressed those two issues of the, uh, the roof elements that to me are um, not character defined. May I ask you to amend the, the motion with this addition um, that um, a part of that motion to allow that the, the um, petitioners must photograph the existing chimney um, and with much 
higher quality photographs than what we've been given tonight. And, excuse me, I, 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 that's a little bit tongue in cheek, but these are a bit murky. Um, <coughs> but some, my iPhone. <coughs> do something better than your iPhone, a real camera, please. And I'm serious about that. But but that a an architectural record be kept um, of all all humor aside, an architectural record be kept of the existing chimney. Um, uh, and that it be um, that actual prints of that photograph be uh, given to the historic Camping for its uh, preservation, um, and that that's a condition of. of I, I would do that. Uh, is uh, historic Northampton the repository yes. of that, or would Forbes Library be the repository? Gen generally, the Forbes. Which one? We've been doing Forbes. Forbes. Yeah. Okay. To. Um, Actually, normally we have on our on our board here uh, Dylan Gaffney, who's in charge of the image collection at Forbes, and and could give us the exact right information. But I, I'll, then I would yeah. suggest my, in my proposed amendment to your right. motion yeah, yeah. that they go to Forbes Library rather than Story Northampton. Okay. Um, I accept your amendment. Okay. And Bruce, that's the issue of certificate of appropriation. Yes. Okay. Is there a second to Bruce's motion? Okay, second. Um, any, we've had lots of discussion. Is there any additional discussion? Right. I do have a yes. question whether we need to discern whether we need to add the motion. You're um, saying that this, any vent sack would need to be. Okay, thank you. Um, we've also, we also, also yeah, do you accept that? that as an addition? To the and you accept that to your mm -hmm. second? Okay. Um, so it, the vent stack being of, of uh, cast iron is now a part of that motion. Um, and uh, all those components being put together, uh, I will call the vote. All those in favor, please say. Can you see if there's any public comment? Before I do that, what? Can you see if there's any public comment before the final vote? Public comment before the final vote? Public comment? No. Okay. Well, that, it's a public hearing, so you should do public comment. Okay. At some point. But there wasn't any. Correct. Okay. Um, I'm not sure about the procedure in that. I, I, I tend to think we're allowed to, to, to vote at that point. But anyway, um, the uh, the vote's been made, uh, seconded, uh, amended, uh, and reseconded, and so forth. And now it's open for voting. And I will call it. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Okay. All those opposed. Okay, we didn't vote. Did you? I'm favor. Okay, in favor. Okay. So uh, the permission carries with the conditions that were attached. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. And I comment that this was a very thorough, professional presentation, and I, I found it uh, very easy to understand what the proposal was. And I would encourage this as an example to anyone else who would be uh, uh, presenting something before the board. Thank you for that. agenda is the consideration of the hearing it's a hearing to determine whether the house at nine Conway Terrace map ID 32a-186 should be determined preferably preserved pursuant to the Northampton demolition ordinance chapter 161 of the general code sir good evening welcome how are you my name is Matt Kip and Eric appreciate your time I'm sure my presentation will not be professional this but please bear with me. So I purchased the old Shaw's Hotel property, corner of Bridge Street, on North Terrace. My intention is to uh, permit for some condominiums, fall condominiums. So we're at the stage of the permitting process um, where we need to determine if this house can come down because it's going to determine the rest of the layout of the project. Okay. So. 
if I could just start with a photo of the house of uh, nine. I'm already here. Is everybody familiar with the house? Yes. Okay. Um, what I'll do next is I'll show you some houses, some pictures of the condition of the uh, of the property. The property has not been lived in in uh, a very long time. Here's a picture of the uh, rather staircase going up to the second floor addition of the property. But I think you pin these up on the board or I can. Oh, if you'd like, sure. Yeah. Okay. Or we can pass them. Or you can pass them. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to be able to see you more closely. Next picture is just a side view of the house showing the deteriorated roof and, and numerous additions that the house mm -hmm. had put and had on it. Next one's going to be the same. Just showing the poor condition of the house. This next one's going to be just a crumbling foundation. In the basement. Sorry about that. With this house. And why should we listen to a crazy man? You bought no. <laughs> <laughs> we just feel that this house and, and the way that this house presents itself in the neighborhood, it, it really doesn't fit with the neighborhood. And it, especially at the top of that street where it's you know it's bigger houses and it's Victorians. And I'm going to give you some examples of the houses that are at the top of the street. I'm sure everybody's familiar yeah. with this one. Let's go pass them around. Or... No, we've got yeah. very familiar with them. Yeah. Yeah. It just you know, this house just does not fit with the neighborhood. And I guess our, our, if we were able to knock this house down, I, we just don't feel that it's a, a unique house either because within with just within a short amount of time and within a, within a stone's throw away, we found houses that are, you know, almost identical within two or three streets from the property. So mm -hmm. we just feel that by, by demoing yes, it. Yes, that is exactly what it yeah. looks like, right? Yeah. I mean, very, very similar houses. This one's on Holy. Those are on, I'm sorry. Back to that page. Yeah, these are on Market Street. Mm -hmm. This one's on Holyoke Street, which is right down the road from Pomeroy Terrace. William Street. You know a lot of Williams. So I'm before you. Ask me for the Okay. Let me let me just let me run some I, some thoughts Please, past yes, you, yes. okay? Because this this can be a deliberative process. It's not just a matter of, of yep. passing down a, yep. uh, a ruling. Um, it's it, it it is a house. It's quite old. First off, yes. Uh, it, it actually it actually is probably uh, 
without without doing the deed search, but just from its design, probably going back to about the 1820s or 30s. I think it was 1870, but that's it's very late. It's very late yeah. style. That's that's called a, a Greek revival. Yeah. It was very popular. Uh, I mean, people could build any style they wanted at any time, obviously. But that style was popular right after the um, the, the revolution, and and in, in the beginning of of America, the sort of federal style and the Greek revival, and it was. And by the time people were, by the time the Civil War came around, they were building much more ornate houses, a lot more filigree, carpenter, gothic, all that kind of stuff. And uh, these kinds of things, these, these uh, sort of, they were originally, you know, the intention was to build like a Greek temple, you know, with the, yeah. and um, so it's probably pretty old. Somebody, somebody made a really bad run to Home Depot and, yeah. and, and put in some. A couple times. God awful windows. Yeah. Um, I do know that a lot of the damage, and it's just, is in, is in a building that was built onto that. Yeah. It's a shed's building that were built onto that. I'm not sure how much of the damage is to the original yeah. structure itself. That building is on, in, in fact, uh, as far as belonging in the neighborhood, the irony is it was there long before any of those big, beautiful houses that you mentioned. So it's more, if, if you want to go back to the history of Northampton, yeah. it's those big, uh, yeah, elaborate don't Victorians that don't belong there, but, but you know, we welcome, we welcome all houses. Um, uh, so, it, it, and as as the the number of houses you've shown us that are similar show, it actually was a the type of building that was built fairly commonly in that old core section of Northampton Center. Um, we've lost most of the colonial era houses uh, uh, through uh, demolition and, and fire and so forth, and so. These, uh, these Greek revivals are, are some of our earliest uh, buildings still in the city. Uh, so we do look on them kind of favorably. Um, having, having said that, I mean, various thoughts come to mind. One is, have you considered it, in the incorporation of the building? I mean, you know it's under there. You're a yeah. your contractor. Yeah. You know that for some amount of money, not from excessive, you can change windows, you can change siding. Um, and it could be, uh, you know, within a reasonable amount of time turned back into something like some of the other houses that you depicted here. And thanks for those, by the way. That was very, very helpful and, and useful. Um, and we know certainly that we ourselves would probably be happy to see all of that shed garbage removed oh, from that house. And there are pictures of that house, there are drawings of that house without the shed on it, uh, going back to the 1875 maps over here in the city, uh, bird's eye views that show that house. Um, so one, I would, I would just ask whether there's any conversation to be had with you about preserving the core original, you know, house uh, without all of the, the garbage stuff that was added later. Is there any, is, as far as the, 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 the plans that you have for that property, we, we're not, where well, you can't get in, we, we don't judge that. Sure, but, sure. Well, but we do, it is our responsibility to ask homeowners if, or building owners if they can think of any utilization of, of, an, of an historic structure so that our historic structures don't get torn down. Right. Um, and, and maybe sometimes uh, through creative incorporation of the historical elements or as much of the core building as possible. I've, you know, and we've, we've seen uh, buildings preserved as offices, as professional suites, as homes, uh, 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 incorporated to larger buildings, and you know, all kinds of creative things that, are, that preserve things. Um, so, it is historically, it's a historically valuable building, if not the only one in town, absolutely, that's good to know. Um, it was never meant to be pretentious, but it was a good solid home when it was built. Um, definitely belong there. Um, it's valuable to historic, Northampton's historic fabric. Um, it's not nearly as old as the, as the Shaw's Motel, built, the red building on that's the other old. side. That one is that's old. That's really old. I mean, that is cool. That's had some additions put on it. Yeah, and we, we're very sorry to see that um, be eligible for demolition. Yeah. Um, um, but, um, uh, you know, this one, this one is. Is, is, is very interesting to us because hiding behind that ugly facade is, is, a, is a core old building. What, what do you think? Is there any way to incorporate this to avoid having it's to tear it down? I'll be honest with you, it's not the end of the world. Do I think it's a better project to take that house down? Because I, I, I am, my plan is to, to renovate the block on the corner. Yeah. Take all the additions off of that, put some nice porches on it, and make that fit in the neighborhood. 
So that, the whole build, the block on the corner is going to be renovated. Yeah. And then my intent was to do three new smaller buildings. And that would be one of the, one of the three. Do I think it's a better project that way? Yes. But is it the end of the world? No. It's not. I just don't think, I, there's just not a lot to work with because I would need to get, I would need to get a multifamily out of that, meaning a two family or, or two condos out of it. Yeah. That would be the intent. And, um, maybe not as is, but maybe not as is, yeah. Yeah, but maybe incorporating into something. I don't know. I mean, I don't, it, we can't, our, 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 our job, unfortunately, is to say yay or nay. And even if we say nay, it's not for very long, it's only for a year or right. a year. Right. So I would rather talk, you know, uh, Cooperatively and, yeah. and just get creative and say, is there anything? Is there any way to? Make, make, I've seen these things used as an addition. I've seen them used as a core with wings attached to them, right. uh, sensitively, uh, and and it was a way of. I mean, people like that kind of uh, historical reference. I think you know it makes the place look, you know, um, um, more you know established and so on. Um, so. Uh, Hey, I'm, I'm, I'm totally dominating the conversation. First, you want to have a, have a shot at it? Yeah, I, I would comment on this. Um, I, first of all, I don't think the house is as old as 1820s, 1830s. I think it's more of a classical revival okay. that would be more of the third quarter 19th century. So the 1870 would be an appropriate date. There might have been something earlier on there, uh, but uh, I, I don't think that the date is something to quibble about. Uh, it is representative of a lot of other houses throughout the city, and probably you know, a couple thousand houses in town that are of that same working man's vernacular housing uh, of that time period. Um, I just, having walked by it a couple of times, um, it knows that it's really in deteriorated condition, uh, that any kind of rehab is probably going to cost more than, um, you know, total demolition and building yeah, construction. Do. We're not supposed to address the economics, so you can, you can strike that. Uh, my biggest concern uh, is not with the necessary rarity of the building or the condition of it um, as part of that whole corner, the Shaw's corner, the one on the very corner, and then uh, this one. Um, but it is located, this house, is located within the potential Pomeroy Terrace National Register District. And on that nomination, this particular property is designated as a, um, uh, uh, what, what's the term? It's a, it's a contributing structure. And to me, that means that visually, uh, it, it's, it's part of the streetscape. And if it is taken out, just like if you had a tooth pulled, uh, and there's nothing to replace it, um, there's going to be a hole in that streetscape. Yeah. If you replace it, put a crown in there or something, it should look kind of like what was there. So my concern is not so much with the adaptive use, the preservation, the rehabilitation of the structure, but I would really like to know what is going to go into that space that's going to do that same job within the district. You know, if you come in with a cubicle, cubular building, flat roof, brick, something like that, that's not going to look good. Right. Uh, we have absolutely no design review over that. Right. You do pretty much what you want, whatever the building code allows. But I'm concerned that if this building goes away, it needs to be replaced with something that looks like it contributes to the quality of the neighborhood. To that, that house or to the neighborhood? To, to the neighborhood, to the, the streetscape. To the streetscape. And consequently, um, I, I feel that it's important to uh, talk about the demolition delay on this until we have a pretty good picture of what's going to replace it. And if a design comes in that we look at it and say, yeah, you know, that that looks appropriate. Right now, we don't know what that's going to be. Right. Uh, and so that would color my thinking as opposed to the condition um, or anything. I, of course, would love to see the building rehab. 
Uh, but I would also like to see Shaw's Motel rehab, but that's not going to happen. Yeah. Um, but that, that's where I sit, that I'm more concerned now, since this is the potential district listed on the National Register uh, that has been designating this as a you know, uh, contributive building, that we want to see that continuity and then, now, for the sake of saying it, that National Register adds value to right. oh, all the property within it. It's not, just a, it's not just an owner it's restriction. Right. Because it's I'm sure you, when you, uh, whatever you put up there, eventually it's going to be big Pomeroy Terrace, you know, condos or something. You're going to take advantage of its location. And what I think I'm concerned about is what are you contributing to the location if you're taking something? So that, that's where I would come from uh, in considering the demolition delay on this particular okay. site. So, so Bruce, you're, you're suggesting a one-year demo delay with, to, with, with the possibility for lifting that if an alternate plan that would basically be a, an appropriate design? If, if, if within you know three months, six months or something, uh, you would come in and say, this is what it's <coughs> going to look like, this is what we're proposing, and we said, yeah, that, that looks okay. Then I think we could go with the, um, allowing the demolition. Uh, but, uh, you know, I, I would suggest a demolition delay pending uh, some review of the potential design here. And I would say we, we can do it for a year, I would say up to, so that we have the flexibility. Yeah, can I kind of clarify that? We, yeah. we have the potential to add. So that. That, that, that would be my comment. Uh, on this particular property. Do you want to make that a little I would be directed by the chair here. But the, 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 the commission's capability is to impose up to a one year demolition delay. We have, um, historically, would be happy again to see that as a very flexible time limit because if there are certain you know, steps that we take taken in, 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 in a month, then we're happy to release the oh, number sure. of light in a month. Um, uh, but it sounds as though there's a request for, a reasonable request for um, some further thinking on this before um, uh, we would give a give an okay on the demolition. Um, and, and again, I would rather that it be creative and, and involve conservation than it, than it be uh, a punitive um, restriction on you. If there's any way, could you, could you possibly come back to us and, and, and say, you know, I've thought about it, uh, either I've thought about some creative way to reuse the core of that old building, get rid of those, we'll, we'll give you no problem at all about getting rid of the, all the right. stuff that was tacked on, that, that was never there. But. Uh, preserve the core of that, or maybe incorporate it into some additional development um, um, because it's pretty small the way it is, right. um, uh, or uh, address the uh, the issue that Bruce uh, brought up of I don't know, I'm not an architect. He is. Uh, uh, you know, how, how do you fill some role? The, the entryway to the Pomeroy Terrace Historic District, and if all of a sudden you got something that's inappropriate there, that's going to destroy the integrity. District. So that's what I so would say. About if it. we vote, if we vote a 12-month um, demo delay, it does, does not mean that the demo delay is going to necessarily last 12 months. We we were happy to work and talk with with uh, applicants all along the way, and have done so, um, uh, and have uh, several times abbreviated the, the delay because of progress made in other other respects. And that we'd much rather do that than, than just sit out a pointless one-year delay. Um, uh, if, if it's clear that, that there are no alternatives, we, 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 are, we cut the delay short ourselves because yeah. there's no point in penalizing and punishing somebody. Right. Um, we just want to see old buildings preserved, that's all. Right. Um, can you work with us on that? Yes. Okay. Okay. Um, then I think the appropriate motion would be for, with that understood that it sounds worse than it, than it is, the, mo the, the appropriate motion would be for the application of a demo del of 12 month demo delay, um, but with the uh, recognition that the, uh, we are working with the owner um, to help to help um, uh, promote uh, preservation um, uh, activities in the meantime. Right, I think, don't we have to, um, 
Uh, doesn't the motion have to say that the building should be considered as preferably preserved and that a demolition delay up to one year be uh, imposed um, subject to review of the design proposal uh, and the purpose is to assure um, preserving the integrity of the potential um, National Register District. Right. Okay. Uh, second. Second. Okay. Discussion. All of. Okay. I'll call the vote. Uh, before I call the vote, is there any? Um, this is a hearing, uh, so I uh, am educated to, to uh, ask if there are any comments from the public on this matter. There being none, I will call the vote uh, and uh, ask if, uh, say aye if you're in favor of it. Uh -huh. Opposed? Motion passes. Thank you, sir. And we're Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.